Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing women in media with a focus on Africa. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at We Show Africa 1 with the hashtag We Show. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. And we still have Dr. Yemisi with us. So, Dr. Yemisi, um, I was talking about, you know, the policies that you said South Africa had put in place and why they are getting it right and how they are getting it right because it's important for us to leave the show with something. So if the government is watching, they're saying that, okay, these are things they can also deliberate. I know you mentioned something about deliberately putting it in a policy for representation. You know, that is one of the things that they are getting right. You know, because I want to see a lot more women in top management level when it comes to even media management, media ownership, and which is what we don't see common, you know, um, especially within our clients here in Nigeria. So what do you think, um, or how is South Africa, what are the things, specifics that they have done to put in place to represent women in, in, in journalism? Okay, so thank you very much for that question. I think, like I said, the, the beginning is that gender policy. I think if you're speaking for Nigeria, um, there's a number of ways we can approach a gender policy, right? Um, both in terms of the industry, itself, individual organizations themselves, but then also nationally. We've got a Ministry of Women Affairs, right? And these are the kind of things that they can be leading the way on because the gender policies should not just cover in terms of women that work in the media, but in terms of how the media is talking about women's rights issues, how the media is talking about sexual violence, for example, which I know has been a big issue in, in, in Nigeria during the lockdown. So the gender policies covers a whole um, a whole broad spectrum of issues. But essentially, the, the central point here is that it is an opportunity to, for us to do a lot more than playing lip service to our commitment to women's rights and for the media to have a, a policy that they, that, that they agree to, that they adhere to um, as part of this improvement of women representation in media, both in terms of roles within the media industry, but in terms of the narratives and the construction of those narratives. Um, what, and to, to bring in the diaspora, one of my favorite films in the last um, few years has been Hidden Figures. I don't know if you know that yeah. film about the three African-American women who were yeah. so instrumental to NASA yeah. um, during the, the, the space race, as they call it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And who knew? Who knew that these three African-American women existed? And who knew how important they were in that narrative? Their story was just forgotten until now, until there was a film about it. And so it's things like that. It's things that like, like making sure that our stories are not forgotten in the narratives about such major um, world developments. Um, and again, it's about that multi-layered commitment from individual organizations championing it, but then also for, through all the associations and as a industry, as a body of organizations. Okay, so and through, through um, through uh, instruments like the Ministry of Women Affairs, we can have it at national level as well. So I think it's multi-layered, and there needs to be uh, there, there needs to be a will to do these things. Okay, so Dr. Okay, MC, before, before I come back to the ladies, I just want to ask a question because all the time we see that with women, it seems like we like to be given handouts. You understand? It like, because most times when you see global funding, there's a lot of funding that goes to women and the girl child. You know, it seems, so most times when you hear some men talk, I beg, I beg, I beg, you know, it's like we are always looking for um, special treatments and preferences and all of that. Do you think women truly deserve this special um, attention, you know, that they, they must have to do this, you know, to be able to project women? Do you think so? I, know somebody's I, I think like any other instances of minority, right? Yeah. There, there is a need for extra support. In this instance, we are the minority in the sense of our representation, in the sense of our voices, our, our ability to not just speak, but to be heard, right? We are a minority in that sense. And so, yes, we need that extra help. I think it's not about people asking for handouts. I think it's a necessity, the same way as, you know, when it comes to race issues or LGBT issues, once you're a minority, you need that extra help in order to reach um, the level of visibility that you need to have the impact and the change <laughs> that you need for there to be that equal um, opportunity to. So I would definitely not categorize it as women um, asking for handouts or always being given handouts. It's not 
handout. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a commitment mm -hmm. to making sure that 50% the people that represent 50% of the society are equal and have a voice and have the agency Absolutely. to um to, to an opportunities access to opportunities the same way as anybody else. Okay. I mean, thank you so much for pointing <laughs> that out because I was about to rise up from this chair when oh, I was asking that question. But um, I, I, I just want to stay on um, the negative connotations. Now, we've seen uh, lots of instances of sexual harassment um, against women in the media, in movies, and, and all of that. Now, for me, I remember when I um, kept expressing my interest to be in the media in Nigeria. And people kept giving me this impression that, you know, when you're in media, people think, hmm, how did she get there? What is she doing? She's beautiful. You know, so I just would like to say, how can we rise above that? Because when you're in the workplace, outside of the media, you are um, a go-getter, you're seen as being forceful, being aggressive. And then when you come into the media, it's like, oh, you're overly sultry. And you know, once you're beautiful, you couldn't have gotten there on merit. How can we really start to turn that narrative around? Because it's one that's so frustrating. It is. It is very frustrating. I think it starts from education, right? How, how, how do we need to reimagine our media education for it to be gender sensitive? So that at the point where these men and these women who have been trained to be leaders in industry have been, have been trained, are reason for education, they are already gender aware before they even go into the industry, right? So how do we embed gender equality um, and gender gender sensitivities into our media training. We need to reimagine media education. And you know, I'm a lecturer, a senior lecturer at Birmingham City University, mm -hmm. and that has always been part of our approach to 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 teaching to media education in terms of all levels of equality. So it starts from there. Um, and then also also the I think that there's an element of cultural impact, right? That uh, that our society is a patriarchal society and there's some personal perspectives, cultural perspectives that will naturally come into the workplace. So that's where media representation, so the representation of women, representation of women's roles, the way in which we talk about women in media content, whether it's film, music, arts, right? That's where we begin to change cultural assumptions and cultural positioning of, um, of women and the way in which we talk about women. So I think there's, again, there's that multi-layeredness in terms of teaching the people who work in the media about these things and making them more aware. But then also, you know, when we, when we, when we do films, and um, I mean, Nollywood is notorious for presenting the mother-in-law as the witch that is going to kill her, kill her, her daughter-in-law, which is not the case, you know. But there is that representation in Nollywood that has, you know, permeated over, over, over time and has presented mother-in-law, stepmothers in a particular particular frame. And so we need to be more conscious about those kind of narratives as we're developing them. Because if we're going to talk about a change of changing the African narrative, changing the narrative of creating new narratives of Africa globally, mm -hmm. it starts from the content that we produce ourselves, right? So it's not just to be left to Western media to change narrative, but it starts with us and the way in which we, in which we choose to um, construct our own narratives. I hope that answers your question. Very, yeah, very, very, and uh, the answer is very apt. I'd like to ask this, um, training is nice again, as I would say, but is there an, a handshake with access to finance? Because it's one thing to provide that training, as, again, as I say, with the opportunities. So are women, do your organization connect women to finance after training? Is this sort of, because I believe that finance is empowerment. So it, does that happen? Oh yeah, I saw something about the pitch where they, Pitch and win some two thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> yeah. So, so we have our annual conference every year because it's annual. And um, this year was meant to be in Johannesburg. Last year we were in Nairobi, and twenty eighteen we're in um, Nigeria in Ibado. Lovely um, event. And one of the key elements of our conference is the, is the pitch zone. And what we do here, uh, well, the objective of the pitch zone is to economically empower women in media. Right, and we approach it in two ways. One, we invite commissioning and editors, commissioning editors from different media organizations, whether BBC, CNN, but also the local uh, media who work with freelancers, so that you can pitch your story ideas to these commissioning editors that you probably couldn't get access to before. But the main part of our pitch zone 
is where we work with funders like the African Union, the International Organization for Migration, the German Development Agency, to develop different, category, different topical areas. And so when you attend our conference, you get the opportunity to pitch towards those categories. So for example, last year, um, in partnership with the AU and GIZ, we had a category around silence and the guns, right? So you could pitch a story idea around that, that topic. And so we had five categories of, of awards last year, and um, we and each winner got two thousand dollars to go and produce that story, right? The story that they pitched. And in that process, also of producing your story, we kind of um, working with you and you know engaging with you in that time as well. And then when your story is published through us and our partners, we amplify that story as well. So and the the, the objective there is that we're giving you the resources. Right, the money to go and do that story that can give you the opportunity to get that promotion that you need. Mm -hmm. Because we also found that um, allocation of resources internally is gendered, right? Mm -hmm. You're not always given the opportunity to do those stories. So mm -hmm. we, we have our pitch zone. We hope to develop it further. This year, we we're meant to develop our mediapreneur and pitch zone, which basically invites people to come and pitch media business, female and um, women in media to pitch media and we business ideas pitch, you know. and we were hoping to be able to give them a lot more than two thousand um, dollars to them I hope are, the media I hope, organization dr yemisi i said i hope we are we are open for the pitching because our own money is not two thousand dollars in need <laughs> <laughs> all right so we have some questions <laughs> okay so um yes i mean we, we're still hoping to do our conference virtually this year no so we're still all right so let's take in some conference questions conference virtual, and, um, um, this is from a viewer he says Good evening, ladies. It is great having a full house. My question, his question is, how do you deal with body influential ladies in journalism if both gender, genders are, both, are brought to book and disciplined? Qualified lady will be uh, put in right position within the organizations. Regards from Ade from UK. So I didn't quite catch the question. What exactly is the okay, question? Okay, his question is, how do you deal with body influential ladies in journalism? What does it mean, body influential? Body influential. <laughs> so I, 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 think that, I think that what that he's mean, trying yeah. to say <laughs> is <laughs> that they, they, they influence Women the audience with the way, their appearance and yes. the way they look. Oh, actually, somebody actually but, told us that we are so pretty that it, he, he, our, our looks deafens his ears, that he cannot hear what we're saying on ways. <laughs> Well, my, my response to that is that we are not a custodian of your, you know, of your sexual appetite. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Yes, <laughs> and I'm here to do my job. And, you know, it's, it, but it's, it's again part of, joking aside, it's part of what I say mm -hmm. about construction right. of the narrative, the representation of women. Mm -hmm. It's about the cultural perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the fact that somebody will see you, you say such an important thing, and the only thing they can think about is how pretty you are that's not your fault so it's not for you to change that and um, but it's about a cultural re um reorientation in okay, terms so we, of we have more how comments. we look how Who's we objectify that? women okay. um, it, it, there's something called the male gaze mm -hmm. and how how women how women are gazed upon um and objectified for the way they look uh, yeah. it's not it's not your fault that you're pretty you're pretty and but you're there to do a job not to be pretty all right, so Uzo says, media, in my opinion, requires a lot of people who are gender educated and willing to give equal opportunities. Then Ayo says, women are usually um, women's problem. Wow. Women must start changing their language to each other and be more supportive. Hmm. Angela says, I hope to see a time in Nigeria where we have over 50% top leadership in media as women. Um, that's competent women in brackets. Angela puts uh, competence there. So what do you think about women supporting women? Because I see, I <laughs> you know, I, I see all those people doing all these women. If I see any woman supporting women, I run away from those kind of people. Because, ah, yeah. Most, yeah, because most times I think it's on yeah, face value. Them. They don't go deep when it, when it comes to women truly supporting women. So what do you, what's your take on that, especially in the media space? Ladies... In, in the process of doing this interview, I've watched the relationship between the four of them, right? The, 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 the connection between the four of you. And that is an example of women coming together to do great things. 
yeah so there, there is that narrative that women don't support each other but i've not seen that you know we each of our conferences bring hundreds of women together and each time everybody leaves um with with collaborative ideas together next time you meet them you'll say oh this person helped me to do this to get to here and we did this work together you know it, it's a now it's a narrative that's been constructed to continue to hold women down it's not something that is as 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 huge as it's made out to be in terms of women always being the cause of women's problem i think it's just another way of putting the onus back on us to sort ourselves out as if we created the inequalities that we face so i think uh, you know people will always be people at the end of the day still but um, again, that's why we we need that deliberate effort to that organisations need to take it upon themselves to deliberately do something about gender inequality in their content and in their organisation, and not and not conclude that it's because the women backstab each other. I've not I, I've not seen I've not I've, that has not been my experience in well, while we've been working. So in, what, um, Dr. Yemisi, in one minute, what word would you leave to all the women in media? One minute. What word would you leave with all of us in media? I didn't catch that. I said in Sorry. one minute, what word would you want to leave with all of us women in media? I think you're capable, keep rising, and you're, you're worth it. <laughs> you know, your voice is important. You youth for there on that stage, you have the opportunity to raise other to get there. You have the opportunity to speak about women and women's rights issues in a way that would affect change. You have the opportunity to go to your management and and be the activist activist within the organization Absolutely. to enact that change All and right, ensure so that Floss TV Africa <laughs> are championing women's rights. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Yemisi. We're looking forward to hosting you anytime you're in Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank <laughs> All you. All right, so ladies, quickly, one minute. Uh, let me start with Ake. Okay, so I would say if you are a woman in media, roll up your sleeves because you have to do double or triple mm -hmm. what the men are doing. But it shouldn't stop you. We need to tell stories from our own eyes. We're tired of, as she said, being the wicked mother-in-law. Come and tell <laughs> us, you know, good stories. And, and women are already doing that, but just know that you have to bring it Absolutely. when you come. I will leave Uti for last because Uti can take forever. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say something Megan Markle actually said. She said, women already have a voice, so we should use it wherever we find ourselves. Absolutely. So women in media should do the same. Yeah. How about you, Uti? Um, I think women, we're natural storytellers. Mm -hmm. we, we have, every woman has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And every story has the power to change somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to, to tell your story. Mm -hmm. Own your space. I mean, if you find yourself in front of a camera, in front of a mic, do your thing. Like Uti Ellen. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For those that don't know, please just call Uti. Give her camera, give her mic. She'll be all right. She'll talk for everybody. Don't you worry. Know, I, I just want to say that, you know, the truth is we are more powerful than we think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it, um, when a woman takes on something, she takes it with everything, every fiber Passion. that she has on uh, her inside. Yeah. So for the men out there, support more women to mm. come out because we think that, yeah, they, we need the change. We know we need change, but we know that when women, more women come out, this change we see, I mean, we'll see it in a very, very short time. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for watching tonight's episode. Thank you again to our guest, Dr. Yemisi. Now please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. Keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at We Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Women, if the soul of the nation is to be saved, I believe that you must become its soul. That is very deep and that is very true. Thank you again, ladies, for doing Yay. this. <laughs> we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy the rest of your evening.